wanted to take a look at Broadcom stock. AVGO is the ticker symbol. For those of you who've been following me for any period of time, my IRA account, I've been holding Broadcom for stock for quite some time. It's one of my, that, that IRA holding is sort of my main uh, holding for all, my portfolio, all right? What do I think is gonna happen with this deep seek thing, which I think is overdone somewhat. I mean, I was just getting used to the fact that we had a solid shoot up higher past 250 on AVGO stock. Broadcom stock, of course, had a great quarter with future uh, prospects looking really solid in the coming quarters. But deep seek, let's be serious about it. Is this legit? First and foremost, the Chinese are notorious for lying. And this is something that, as an economist, we look at their numbers regularly and say, where in God's name are you coming up with that? Uh, not 100% on board with everything that they're saying. I always give them the benefit of the doubt that they are lying. Uh, and if you think from that perspective, then you start looking at things. And I think over the course of the, the next couple of weeks and months, people are going to be looking at this and say, yeah, this, this isn't jiving. So we did see a big sell-off in NVIDIA stock. What do I take? What is my take on my Broadcom stock holdings? Will I be doing anything with that? No, I will not. I'm, this is in my IRA account. I've had it for years and I will leave Broadcom stock in that account. But I wanted to do a full uh, analysis on Broadcom stock itself, break down Broadcom stock, take a look at ABGO and what I think is going to happen next and how you can probably sort of take advantage if there is sell-off in the semiconductor industry, there is a SOXS ETF. It's an inverse ETF. Take a look at that. I just put a video up on that. If you believe that we are going to see a lot of cages get rattled because of deep seek, that's something potentially that you can get into. Buy on the dips, and if it rallies, it rallies at a 3x. But let's break down Broadcom stock, and I'll tell you what I'm going to be doing with my holdings. Here we're looking at the four hour bar chart on AVGO stock, Broadcom stock. Um, they did their earnings release uh, in mid-December. And for anybody who's been following me, of course, throughout summer and into fall, I kind of had to take a break. I had a bunch of things going on. So I didn't really do a lot of content. I've certainly covered Broadcom stock previously. Um, certainly thrilled to death to see the news that we had uh, in December. Just getting used to crossing the 250 level, hoping that we could stay there. It didn't stay there. Looked like it was going to shoot again up. Uh, Broadcom stock would shoot again and cross 250. Came real super close on, I think, Thursday or Friday just before. Then, of course, deep seek rattled cages across the board. Again, full disclosure, I own this. I've owned this for a number of years. I don't plan on doing any kind of changes on this. I don't see any fundamental shifts that would necessarily push me to do so. For me, Broadcom stock is a long-term value investment. I do believe that we will see with this kind of stock uh, a consistent increasing return. However, as an economist, I also see that uh, the economy is probably going to be forced to strict itself simply because the Federal Reserve blew it again. Uh, first and foremost, I am an economist and I look at the entire economy. And when I did pick out my whole portfolio, I have 12 stocks in my IRA, that portfolio. And that portfolio, um, those are long-term holdings. And I will offset with certain kinds of trades. I will get involved in SOXS ETF. That's an inverse ETF on the semiconductor industry. So that's something you would want to take a look at. I just put a video up on that, so make sure to take a look at that. But I won't be doing any real kind of shifts. I went back like a decade ago, I think eight or nine years ago, uh, and I said, let me grab, you know, I, ha I had been building up my area, and let me grab a bunch of stocks in various sectors, just the top one that I think will perform well. But as an economist, I look at the entire economy and then I trade regularly out of my other account, my trading account. So I have like my IRA account and my trading account, and then I have a few other accounts that sometimes go somewhere and sometimes they don't. I will trade regularly SPY ETF, QQQ ETF. 
and bring in extra money that way. A lot of the video content that I do is geared to that. But for a long-term holding, I think Broadcom in the future will continue to perform. So I'm not going to make any shifts, but I sure wouldn't have minded it staying above 250 for like more than one bar. Taking a bigger look, this is SOXX ETF, the red line. And I went back, I tried to, for those who uh, are just finding me for the first time, I always look at the latest big economic event and ask the question, how are stocks moving or how's the economy since that one event? And the biggest event we had most recently, of course, was the lockdown for COVID back in 2020, March, April of 2020. And so that's where this chart, actually this chart goes into 2019, but it gives you an idea. Um, SOXX is an ETF for the semiconductors. It's performed well, but there's a lot of laggards in there. Broadcom obviously is not one of them. NVIDIA kicked Broadcom's butt. Uh, did I miss something there? Yeah, probably. But I, am I disappointed? No, not at all. I still have about 10 to 20 years before I really want to uh, of doing this before I say, that's it. I'm just going to throw it in some REITs and take dividends for the rest of my life. In the meantime, this encapsulates what's going on with Broadcom stock. And as you can see, uh, the big jump up and the sell off. Where do I think we go from here? I think Broadcom is still a solid, continually performing stock, but you might get the opportunity to buy on a big dip. It will be painful, admittedly, but I'll try and make money in other ways to offset that. This is SOXS ETF, all right? I showed you the red bar in that last chart. That was SOXX ETF. That is the semiconductor, one of the semiconductor ETFs. If you believe that there's gonna be a rebound in semiconductors across the board, AKA mostly Broadcom and NVIDIA, which that could probably still happen, SOXX ETF is a great way to get involved. SOXS ETF is an inverse ETF. It's a 3X ETF, meaning you get three times the daily movement. That's their goal is to create, if there's a daily movement of say a tenth of a percent, they're looking for three tenths of a percent. So if, you're look, if you believe that the semiconductor industry still has some cage rattling that's gonna happen, SOXS ETF is a great inverse ETF trading strategy to take advantage of semiconductors selling off. I, again, I think the Chinese, more likely than not, aren't telling us 100% of the truth at all. We'll figure that one out. But this gives you an idea of what you could do if you're holding on to Broadcom stock and you think, like myself, you know, this this could hurt a little bit. This is one way you could take advantage of downward up, uh, movement in stocks. Broadcom, quarterly revenue, 14.1 for Q4. This was pretty solid over Q4 2023 at 9.3. This was really solid. And guidance looked pretty solid as well. Uh, gross margins loosened up a bit. Costs were increasing, but that's to be expected with some of the developments that they got moving forward. Um, Operating margins, again, uh, cost, there were some cost shakeups there and we're seeing a progressively higher return to operating margins. Hopefully we can get up into the 40s again. Uh, this boils down to net margins, 29.9%. So basically Broadcom, for every dollar they bring in, they keep a, uh, 30 cents. It's not bad. Can we get back up to say 35? That's very doable when you when you take a look at what they're doing for operating costs and how that's going to shift and those costs are going to be borne out. Um, earnings per share, buck forty-two for the latest quarter, which was a very solid increase over the buck eleven that they had a year ago. This is uh, adjusted, of course. Price to earnings ratio. This is one that kind of scares me. The current earnings is now 136 price to earnings ratio, which is a bit high. Projected revenue for 2025, 61.4 billion, 70 in 2026. And I don't necessarily know that they hit this. Not because of their own 
necessarily because of the economy and what might potentially happen there with the Federal Reserve. Again, I am a, an economist first and foremost, and that's where I encapsulate everything. Finally, projected earnings per share for 2025, 636. That's what we're going to be focusing on when we break this down. The U.S. 10-year Treasury yield is 4.65%. 4.65%, that's the benchmark investment rate. That is the, like, you compare everything to that and you ask this, the question, is this a good time to buy this stock? Well, first, that's your benchmark. You would have to sit there and rationalize that an investment in any particular stock would outperform that safety of the U.S. 10-year Treasury. Given the economy, I don't know that Broadcom stock, AVGO stock, necessarily is uh, a safe or less risky environment. Because I do believe that the Federal Reserve lowered interest rates too fast, too soon, should not have been lowering your interest rates at all. And we're going to have to pay the price when they pivot sometime this year and send rates back up. Eggs. It keeps going back to eggs. Um, but when you break down that 636 over the current price, you see the yield there is 3.075%. That's a pretty low forward yield for my taste. I wouldn't buy this stock today. Definitely not. Avgo Broadcom stock, I would not buy AVGO at this price at all because it's overpriced given its potential. And this is after the pullback from the NVIDIA stock sell-off because of DeepSeek. So while I was quite joyous about the 250, I also thought that's a bit high. Uh, given that, what would I do? I'm looking at Inverse ETF trading strategies, SOXS ETF. Again, I have two primary accounts. I have a couple other smaller ones, but I've got my main IRA account, then I have my main trading account. And I'll be attacking SOXS ETF, that inverse ETF, semiconductor inverse ETF, with an inverse ETF trading strategy that when Broadcom stock falls, I can make money on that inverse ETF 3x. That's where you can make some money on a potential move like that. But I'm a bit more sophisticated than a lot of guys out there. I like to trade options. I like to trade options that could turn out to be lottery tickets, buying deep out of the money options two, three months out thinking, you know what, we're probably going to see some big shifts. And because of that, this stock right here, this inverse ETF will light up big. Although I'll lose money in Broadcom stock when it falls, I'll gain money here. My goal is to maintain a, a high watermark with equity. Then when those stocks dip, I'll transfer money. I transfer about a thousand a week because of my age and what I can do um, into my IRA and start investing in that, that way. Profits, I just keep sending to my IRA account. I buy a lot of crypto with it, actually, to be honest with you. Then I trade that crypto. That's the other thing that I do. Uh, inside my IRA, I have a bunch of crypto. So that's my strategy and how I move forward with certain things, sort of protecting my high watermark in my main portfolio, while at the same time taking advantage of the fact that the stock market itself is going to be quite exhilarating this year. Lots of opportunities. Inverse ETF trading strategies might be something you want to kind of consider. For Broadcom stock, me personally, I, th there's nothing on the fundamentals that makes me want to pull the trigger and say, I'm getting out of that. It is expensive right now, but I don't, I wouldn't want to get out, then buy on some dip too risky for me. I'll just hold it plain and simple. I'll try and make other money in other ways as that comes down, then buy the dip then. Make sure to hit my like and follow button. Uh, for the channel, helps improve everything, of course. Plus, the Substack newsletter, uh, written content. I'm putting something out on inverse ETF trading strategies if you're looking for that, because this might be the year of inverse ETF trading strategies. Make sure to like and follow for that. We'll see you in the next video.